This is uh, another great segment I get to get with Dr. Marty Miner, uh, physician extraordinaire, clinical professor of family medicine, urology, Miriam Hospital, one of the first founders, creators, and still uh, developers working with me a men's health center at a major institution. And uh, he's been doing this for a long time, a legitimate men's health center, which does a lot of different things for men. But the idea is to make them healthier mentally and physically. And if anyone has any questions about men's health centers, I always like to refer them to several people, especially uh, Dr. Miner. So thanks, Dr. Miner, for joining us. And this is our last one of our last segments that I have with you, and it's on it's on weight loss. Okay. And, okay. and here's I want to give it to you from my perspective. I want to talk to you about the roadkill, I, I, and I really want to maybe def, uh, title the video the roadkill that was, or all the, the damage that was weight loss drugs in the United States until recently. So I'll give you an example. I made a quick list on a piece of paper and I looked at some handouts of some of the past weight loss drugs that we had. We had CNS stimulants that are still out there. Good luck with that. We have a lipase inhibitor where you've got to get a lot of fat in your diet. And then there's an over-the-counter version called Orlistat. We have an oh, opioid sorry. antagonist with an amino keto. We have a sympatho, a sympathomimetic, all these stimulants. We had a drug, I don't know if you remember, Marty, called, uh, called Cy Cybutramine. Do you remember Cybutramine? It was Meridia. It was one of the biggest selling uh, mm -hmm. drugs. And it was global. And then it increased blood pressure and increased the risk of stroke. And it was removed. My point is, the reason in 30 years of my career, I've never been excited about any weight loss intervention in terms of extrinsic, like a, like a pill or injection, is that they always came with such a catch that you would lose weight, but overall they weren't healthy for you. They right. would create a cardio that they weren't heart healthy. You would think intuitively weight loss would be heart healthy, but not with all these medications and pills. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Oh, I would agree completely. They were all sympathomimetics, fentramine, um, fenfen. They were all yes. stimulants and they'd cause they'd be responsible for this cardio metabolic hyperdynamic state people would be it's like living on adderall and of course they'd lose uh you know five to six percent of their weight and their appetites would be diminished but then their blood pressures would be elevated and they'd be set up for other major negative events especially if they became dependent on them as yeah, stimulant that's exactly. And there's so many here on the list that I don't want to even give any of them credit. And they've all been sort of, they've been woof, woof. They've been, you've got dogs in the background. They've been dogs. I mean, they have, right. right? They've not been heart healthy. And we, we, you tell patients, you know, heart healthy is all healthy, but not in this case, but, but now, and I don't know, I'm asking for your assistance. Now we get this thing here called Wagovi. Uh, some glutide, I think I'm pronouncing it right. I don't know. Tell me if I'm pronouncing it, it wrong. No, you're, it is. Okay. So everyone's using these words and it's, it's a, such a jaded term, but I'm, th this is a real, this is an appropriate word. They're calling it a game changer because the average weight loss has run over 15%. And people don't understand what that means. You were lucky with these past really bad medications for weight loss to get 5%, like you said, then you got cardiotoxicity. This is 15%. This with, is a, this is the same as bariatric surgery, 15 to 18%. At the studies with Wagovi with semaglutamide have been um, done for 50, 68 weeks. So it's over 68 weeks. People have lost between, and there have been four studies over 4,500 individuals. It's extraordinarily safe. Not only is it extremely safe, but the effects of the smaller dose, the lower dose in diabetics has showed improved renal and um, cardiovascular outcomes. Now, those haven't been studied yet in non-diabetics because, but they are now being studied and the hope is that they're gonna be published and they'll show the same effects in, um, in another two or three years. Um, cardiovascular wise. So we not only have a medication that achieves the same weight loss potentially as 
um, as bariatric surgery, but we have a medication that however it's doing it, improves metabolic syndrome, all the parameters of metabolic syndrome, including lipids, improves blood pressure, um, and definitely improves weight. And we're, it's like it's the, the, the fifth vital sign that we've been <laughs> ignoring for so long. We That's finally, and we have to, and it's once a week, um, it's a subcutaneous injection, they have um, released it as an oral medication, which is what Rebelsius is on a daily basis. Um, we don't know if that's going to have the same effect um, on weight loss, but this is an amazing med. Wow, I don't see you endorse that much stuff. So you really think that the data matches the hype? I mean, on paper, when I look at it, it's I, I, I can't find all the problems that we had last time with all the other drugs. So you, you really feel that this is a game changer potentially. I do, I do, I do. I think that, um, you know, I, I don't think enough people are willing to go through surgery to treat their obesity. And I think we've, we've shamed people, even as we describe it in our medical notes, um, he's a 45 year old obese male <laughs> rather yeah. than male with obesity. You know, we're, yeah. we, we define them and that's how they define themselves and they're shamed and they're chronically depressed. Um, and we don't even differentiate that at all. Yet yeah. now we have a tool that I think is safe and efficacious, which is wonderful. Are you concerned though? Here, now I'm going to throw you some catches that I was worried about. The side effect profile seemed pretty good. I mean, they were mostly like, they're mostly GI side effects. It seemed yeah, like it's a, some nausea effect. at the beginning. Okay, that's nausea been my experience. Beginning. But the, the one that I was worried about, surprised, was it seemed the cost in, in the introduction. The cost, it, it, it's, 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 right now, it's, the drug is not available to most individuals because of cost. I mean, frankly, it's um, it's close to nine hundred dollars a month if you're going to pay for it cash price, which is ridiculous. And most insurers are not covering it. But this was just approved by the FDA in um, June of this year. Yeah. So, like any product, it almost takes two years. It seems in our country. I don't know why. Before insurers follow or even look at data to put it on their formularies and that, you if they, just stop i'm oh, sorry you were saying I'm, if you only if they only understood the benefits of weight reduction and what it would ultimately do to reduce the cost of medicine um, but you know right now it's the cost is prohibitive and the coverage is very poor I, I wish you, you touched upon a norm. I wish people understood the A to Z benefits of this kind of weight loss. 15% is mind boggling. It's a, mind boggling. We've mind never boggling. had anything like, like it. Nothing. Take a, take a 300 pound male or female. You take 15% off. That's 15 pounds per hundred pounds, right? Yeah. That's 45 pounds. And, right. and all the potential changes. Now you probably have to st- there's going to be new data coming out. I don't think it hasn't been published yet. The two-year data seems to hold up as well as the one-year data. And so I'm kind of going, do, do, do doctors like Marty Minor want to get their hands on it to see what happens to testosterone with that kind of weight loss? You it would be I mean? fascinating. It would be fascinating. I would you know, think- and that, that, would be, that would be really incredibly interesting to study in men. Um, but also just to follow simple things like, you know, men with hypertension that you're treating with BMIs greater than 27, um, what, what would happen to those men? Would they normalize their blood pressure? Would they go yeah. off meds? Would, their, would their, um, their depression scores improve? You know, it's just, there's so many things to study with this drug. So that if we can I, only I get it covered. You, have I motivated you to, if you can get your hands on the medication, you can study the effects in men in terms of testosterone changes? Because oh, yeah. I looked at the data on bariatric surgery and testosterone changes, and I thought, wow. It's impressive. It's impressive. amazing. It's impressive. Right? 
several hundred points in some men. And by the way, this week, I'm doing the interview with you is the same week in JAMA surgery, the Cleveland Clinic came out with their bariatric surgery data showing that men who lost significant and women who lost significant amounts of weight, let me quote you from the article, was associated with a lower risk of hospitalization, need for supplemental oxygen and severe COVID-19. Right. 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 So it's, right. The, it's the stuff you mentioned. It's the ancillary benefit of the weight loss. If it comes from this drug or if it comes from something else that we're not, we're not, get, we need to get people more excited about. So I, I mean, I don't know if you have any other comment on the drug, but I, I, I didn't know if you were going to be that excited about it, but it seems like you think, again, this could be, a, this could be a game changer. I think that it truly is. I do. Wow. I do. Wow. And I mean, the only negative is that it's an injectable subcutaneous, yeah. which is easier, but it's still an injectable. So the SLT2 meds are, um, are oral meds. If they have a similar effect on, on appetite suppression, then perhaps they'll be easier to take. But, um, and, and, the use in non-diabetics has not been established yet, but right now I think this is amazing. That's awesome. Is, I, I mean, I want to. I would have loved to come on here and said that you don't need this, that diet and exercise beats this. But what people don't it know about do it. it doesn't do it. In the randomized trial, the placebo arm, they were told to cut back 500 calories plus to do 150 minutes of exercise. So when you talk about these huge amounts of weight loss, this was up against the placebo group. This is up against the placebo group. All yeah. 4,500 men, yeah. I mean, not men and women, but 4,500 people yeah. up against the placebo group. Yeah. So, so they were all doing a little exercise and diet, but it was this on top of it. These GLP-1 receptor agonists apparently suppress appetite, have some other GI effects, and um, it's a hormone well, the human body makes, but not at this level, I guess. Not at this level. And, you know, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't continue exercise and diet. Exercise right. and diet are keys to longevity, yeah. as you and yeah. I believe. Um, but it's just, this is the first tool that we have to really get substantial weight reduction over That's time. That's awesome. And I'm glad we were one of the first people to inter introduce it in the urology sphere to get people excited to look at it mm -hmm. along with diet and exercise. Cause in the trial, they were also doing diet and exercise right. which made the drug work better. Right. But right. Thanks, for, thanks for helping me introduce this compound, which is the first time I can't make fun of something in the weight loss intervention of pharmacology or another area. Cause all that stuff didn't work. A lot of it didn't work and came with too much toxicity. And this could be the exception. So you're not going to use Oristat anymore? No. <laughs> no it's, just, it's just, yeah. Dr. Meyer talking about the overcome. I mean, these were all good, but these were like, I call them mosquito bites. They were, they were, you know, they were just little hits, right? They were just, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. you know, these, these weren't even singles. These were like walks. And, and then it comes with catches, you know, you got to make sure you take your multivitamin. If you go too low fat in the diet, there were all these catches that are mind numbing mind-numbing and mm -hmm. and like i said you outlined at the beginning of this session perfectly the frustration that i have seen for 30 years is that hey we're going to help you lose weight but we're sorry we might increase your risk of a stroke or heart attack what what kind of right. what kind of advertisement is that it's, it's yeah. wacky so yeah. i didn't want to believe what govi i still want to be somewhat skeptical but you're helping me want to believe that we should be studying urology and, 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 and seeing if we can confirm these benefits in a urologic setting. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. All right. Thank you so much, sir. We'll be yeah. back doing this again. I appreciate you very much. And I will see you soon at the next meeting where we can discuss controversies.